Hey guys, it's me again, back on Destiny with a, another new Hunter build video. This is take I don't know how many, <laughs> because I don't know how to edit, so I'm trying to do this in one take, so be indulgent, I will stutter, I will uh, catch myself searching for my words, that's normal, I have no script, uh, I'm doing this only on game knowledge and memory. So, today... We're going to be making a build video for Mask of Fealty, which is by far one of my new favorite exotics. Uh, so this exotic uh, makes it so that Withering Blades hits, bounce, and create stasis crystals. And refund a portion of your melee energy. Using Withering Blade to shatter a stasis crystal or a frozen target will uh, spread other shurikens and create some more stasis crystals. Uh, the final part of this description does not work as of now. When she has addressed it, it should be fixed in the near future. Uh, however, this exotic is still great without uh, this being taken into account. So, uh, I started wanting to make this build on Stasis using Icebreaker uh, just because it was fun. But I soon realized that Prismatic was just way too good to be passed on. Uh, it's probably one of the best builds I've ever made in especially end tier end game content. Uh, which I'll be showcasing after the explanations of how the build works with a Master Law Sector. I will probably buy, uh, be dying in there, uh, but, it, you know, you'll just have to trust me. It's good. Like, I, I've tested everything. It's a really good build. So, let's start with the subclass. Uh, you're going to want to go with Stylist Executioner, because Stylist, Execution, Stylish Executioner is uh, Invisibility. And invisibility is kind of broken so obviously you want it it's like the best aspect in any subclass uh, on the hunter no matter which one you're talking about uh, and winter shroud because since we're on a stasis focused build you're gonna be slowing pretty much everything all the time uh, and you want to get your gamblers dodge as often as possible just so you can get your withering blaze which is like the main thing of this build uh, super wise you're going to be using uh, deadfall and fragment wise you're going to be using facet of ruin uh, which will make our uh, ice explosions our shatter damage be much stronger uh, facet of protection which could be replaced arguably by, by facet of purpose but um, so you get overshield because of your void super uh, it could be quite good but uh, you're s just always transcendent so I feel like the uh, increased effect of the dr you get from this fragment would be a better option uh, facet of devotion making it so that you get um, some light bar uh, light progress to your uh, light transcendence bar yes <laughs> um, because with mask of fealty and the shattery damage we'll be proccing our dark the dark portion of our uh, transcendence bar always goes up super fast, so you're making up for that with Facet of Devotion. Uh, Facet of Dawn, so we can get Radiant for bonus damage and also being able to stun anti-barrier champions. Um, just This is just great. The anti-barrier portion doesn't matter as much because of something I'll explain afterwards, but just in general, this is really, really good on a melee uh, build with a hunter and facet of grace making it so that our kvasta which is our main exotic weapon for this build will get uh, grant us some more um transcendence energy for both of our bars and give us even more if one of them is already filled up so you can just top off one of your two bar when the other one is uh full also our super will give us some uh, our super kills will give us some more transcendent energy I'm not sure it works with the enemies that are trapped inside the tether, but I know that the like kill you get by shooting it on the, the on an enemy will count towards it. For the weapons, we're using Kvostov just because it's probably like one of the best uh, kinetic uh, ener transcendence energy generating weapon because of the bouncing bullet just creating a bunch and also it hits kind of like a truck. It, it's a really good weapon overall. Uh, with shoot to loot as well, making it so that even in harder content, you can shoot your ammo to pick it back up. And uh, same for your orbs of power. Uh, v uh, VS Velocity Baton. Baton. Uh, with Demolitionist and Attrition Orb will be our main light uh, transcendence energy generator. And uh, Versus Chill Inhibitor, which is kind of impossible to get. So 
yeah un unless you're lucky like i am or just spent way too much time in the dungeon like i actually have uh just use any good gl uh, because they're really good this season uh mod wise we're going with kinetic siphon armonic siphon and dynamo now I, now some of you might be thinking why aren't we using hands-on the reason is simple the shatter damage is what gets the kill uh, with this build not the melee unless you're in like low tier content but like I, I don't do that type of stuff like if you're going in patrol everything will be getting killed by anything so yeah hands on doesn't matter much because the shatter damage is what gets the kills on this build for the same reason we're not using heavy handed on the gauntlets because uh just shuriken just won't get the kill so we're going with void loader instead so we get a uh, faster reload speed for our grenade launcher uh impact induction and momentum transfer just help us getting more uh, ability energy uh on your chest piece as always you want to focus depending on the uh activity you're doing if there's solar damage in there just make sure you put on two solar i put on charged up this is not necessary if you feel like you're dying too much just put on another resistance but i just know like knowing that i have a full minute of uptime for my damage surges which are obviously stasis because my heavy weapon is stasis and this is what i use to take out champions and like larger targets and obviously our uh, recovery is quite low so most of our the uh, regeneration will be coming from recuperation this might sound like that's not much regarding uh survivability however the amount of orbs we create because of velocity baton and uh, kvostov is quite high so this is more than enough in my opinion and we also get devour uh from something i'll explain right after rarely though so don't rely on the idea that oh i love devour no you really rarely will but when you do proc it it's devour so you can try to keep it up as much as you possibly want time dilation just so i get more time on my surges but maybe reaper could be argued for there uh honestly go with what you feel like 40 seconds is not much shorter than a minute so yeah comfort wise you should pick this one if you want to get even more orbs which i don't think is necessary but you still could uh, go with reaper bomber because outreach is unnecessary uh since we use gambler's dodge so every time we dodge we just want to get more uh grenade energy back as we get our melee as well and powerful traction obviously because we're going to be using recuperation for our health regen um now for the seasonal artifact this does not matter at all like everything we need to stun champions is already in our kit i would still argue for overload uh bridge shield grenade launcher just because you know we're using two of them uh no we're using one of them one of them is not breach my bad uh, uh rapid impact more reload speed killing breeze uh just more mobility so you get your dodge faster crystalline converter kind of useless but i just don't know what else to put in there because you like just with the tonic we'll be using you get the part that stasis final blows will create a shard of stasis so you can like proc it this way but that's the only way you get a stasis shard so it's not really useful just take it because there's nothing else um power for pain from pain will make it so that our tether kills uh the when we kill enemies with uh like that are inside our tether they will grant us devour ail the storm for more shatter damage and uh, spreading more slow it's amazing uh debilitated debilitating debilitating to thing wave yes uh <laughs> uh just because again there's kind of nothing else we want there like we can't proc armor of aramis because we don't get frost armor and a uh, concussive reload because this is the mod this season uh like we can't pretend it uh, otherwise like 15 percent more damage with our grenade launchers uh well with everything once we've hit something with our grenade launchers so yeah kind of crazy uh brain freeze more slow more shatter this is what we want and nothing else here really procs so we go with kinetic impact even though it kind of sucks right now uh let's hope it gets buffed in the future uh i think that's no, no, there's one last thing I wanted to mention. If you're going in GM and harder content, Wish Ender really does a great job for uh, anti-barrier without needing to proc Radiant. Uh, 
So I'd recommend using this in really like difficult content, but I just don't find it as fun as Kvostov and it won't create as much transcendence energy. So yes, but in GM it's great. I've tried it. It's kind of wonderful. Um, I think that's about it. Let's just go do some... I've been pushed off the ledge. Let's just go do a uh, Master Lost Sector, which is what I'll be doing to showcase the potency of the build. I, this is the second uh, Lost Sector I'm recording because the first one didn't feel that great. Uh, first thing I wanted to showcase was if you shoot your shuriken sometimes, uh, the stasis crystal won't spawn underneath, like right underneath the enemy, uh, which is not a big deal. But when you like rely on this to be able to stun these guys, it kind of is. So keep that in mind uh, and be careful as you play around this. Uh, but in general, it should not be that big of a deal. Now you see it was uh, frozen, so I turned invisible as I killed him. Uh, oh yeah, also I think there's a modificator that makes it so your health doesn't regen. Yeah, there is. I cool. So this will prove even more the fact that uh, in most art content, recovery is kind of useless. You want to focus on, on buffs or uh, ores of power to be able to recuperate your energy. So as you can see, my uh, transcendence uh, bar is al already full for the dark side at least and using one shot or two of velocity baton is enough to grant it fully to me. Um, what you want to do is pop it as soon as possible and you know like run in and make sure you freeze everything, chain attack and uh, yeah that's pretty much it. Fairly simple uh, gameplay, just spam abilities as soon as you get them. However, I do believe that there is a certain skill uh, like requirement to this build just because of how much you need to be aware of uh, like when you want to throw your abilities and uh, like what is the best way to spend them most of the time. Uh, not that big of a skill requirement obviously because it's destiny and like your skill is kind of your build. Uh, but still, like I, I feel like some new players that just shoot their guns <coughs> without focusing too much on spamming abilities might struggle a bit. Uh, so we're going to keep moving towards the middle here, freezing everything. Our darkness bar is already full. What I should be doing is throwing my uh, stasis debuffs and then shooting with velocity baton in there. Uh, but you know, it, it does the trick anyways. Transcend it again, popping it. Uh, there's something else I'm failing to mention about Transcendence. It'll, it'll come back to my mind. Uh, for now, I'll just shut it and uh, let the gameplay speak for itself, which is, you know, karma, because as I say that, I get killed. All right. Let's see how much energy I'm getting back with from just two melees. Put my nade in there. Oh yeah, something else, that's what I wanted to mention. The amount of damage you deal with this build makes it so that even if you're low on uh, uh, intellect, which you should be, oh I forgot to mention, <laughs> forgot to mention, you want to focus on discipline, strength, and, re and uh, resilience for this build and try to have around uh, 50 mobility because our seasonal artifact gives us the other app. Uh, so yeah, you might not have much uh, Intellect, but you deal so much damage that you get your super back quite fast and your transcendence as well as you can see. I killed myself with this. Uh, I think he's gonna die no matter what because of it. Yeah, there you go Because this grenade. The, oh, yeah, also the grenade uh, for Prismatic Hunter has been buffed uh, It's very appreciated. It has quite a bit of I call it aim assist like tracking to it now it will like fly towards the enemies, uh, like curving in the air to, to make sure like they stick to them. So this is very much appreciated, thank you Bungie, because it was pretty rough. It was, in my opinion, probably the worst grenade for uh, Prismatic before this thing. And now it's probably one of the, well, they're, they're all good, but this one deals the most uh, damage. But,
Uh, again, might die because L3 gen is low, but invisibility keeps me alive in my darkest times. Probably, again, I, I really hope they don't, but I feel like the invisible V is so good that it maybe should be nerfed at some point in PvE. Like, Void Hunter's infinite invisibility builds are still quite meta and have always been some of the best options for any solo Grandmaster and that type of content. But, I don't know, maybe Titans uh, and Warlocks are just starting to get like good stuff as well regarding solo content. It's not my main cup of tea because I just really enjoy with playing with other people, so I don't focus that much on solo flawless dungeons and stuff like that. But I do believe that hunters, especially for GMs, are some of the best to deal with this. Uh, this guy up there as well. I, I'll go up there, use my shuriken to stun both champions, and then I'll go back down to kill the witch. Oh, it's only one champion in a, a normal sniper, I believe, though. I die, but hey, let's try. Ah, I hate those. Again, I was about to reload this weapon. There is no reason why you'd want to do that. Uh, Envious Arsenal is one of my favorite perks of all time. I fell in love with this troll and I know that some of you guys have been farming for this for quite a while. Trust me, I have like three days in the dungeon. I have as well, but it is worth it. And with this, um, this fix that Bungie is coming up with regarding the uh, perk RNG being abysmal uh, I feel like it's gonna be absolutely worth it to go spend a bit more time in there trying to get this specific role on the versus chill in a bit there is that the one yes it is yeah. all right uh, I'm not gonna pick up the chest but this is it this was the the, the, the showcase uh, I don't want to pick it up because I have a glitch going on that makes it so I have double perks on every well pretty much every world drops uh, you should check out cheese forever is video about that but yeah anyways this was uh the build uh quite happy with it i'm happy to be showcasing it to you again uh q if you're here i made this video for you and the community sat thinking of you right now uh anyways this was fun uh hope you guys enjoyed the build uh if there's anything you change about it anything you modify uh make sure to write about it in the comments and uh yeah See you in the next one, maybe someday eventually, I can't confirm, but okay, bye!